All right, my name is Moses Chung, and my topic is on genetically modified food. Genetically modified organism is a plant or animal that has undergone changes in the DNA, either adding or deleting a certain gene to um, using genetic engineering. Genetically modified organism has, is generally cheaper, more beneficial, or both. The FDA states that and the FDA has a, guide, uh, has a certain guideline on which plants could be used for genetically um, altering, like tomatoes and corn. So these could be s sold in the markets. And although many have raised concern on what the genetically modified organized organisms can cause, there's, scientists have shown that there's no proven certain negative effects of the genet genetically modified organisms being sold in the markets already. My proposition is that genetically modified organisms have a positive effect on overall health. My first claim is that there is many advantages of using genetically modified organisms in the agricultural field. Um, they could be used to uh, protect crops against insects, pesticide, and herbicide. Um, farmers use, spend a lot of money on spraying pesticide on cro crops. And people think this is a, uh, like, no one wants to eat food that has been exposed to pesticide. Like teenagers today, they wouldn't even eat food that's been dropped on the ground. So who would want to eat food that's been exposed to pesticide? However, using genetically modified organisms, by inserting a single, a certain gene, crops cannot withstand insects or the pesticide the farmers use. And um, this is very beneficial to farmers because uh, it saves a lot of time for the farmers, and um, it's a relatively expensive process. Um, example is a BT corn, um, is a type of genetically modified plant, which provides protection against pests and has this, the farmers claim that it has the same nutritional values as a traditional corn. Um, how many of you have tasted sweet corn before? That's an example of a genetically modified a plant and it tastes better than the regular one, right? Mm -hmm. um, this way, so farmers also save a lot of time and they're able to tend more attention to other crops and they can save a lot more money too. Um, this practice is already being done in real life. In Monsanto, farmers are using soybeans resistant, resistant to a particular herbicide which reduces costs and saves the environment because they don't have to pour as much herbicide and it won't, there won't be like runoff of, of the herbicide. My second claim is genetically modified organism, organisms are also beneficial to the human race. Genetic engineering could be used to increase the vitamins in food. For example, the golden, modified golden rice has more vitamin A than the regular white rice. So, um, this personal example at home, we always eat, um, like, we don't, we don't, we stay, we tend to stay away from the white rice and we go with the different color rice and this has more nutrients and vitamins than the regular white rice. This, the process of um, enhancing the nutrients available in the plant is known as nutritional enhancement. Um, also with genetic engineering, another option available is, um, Proteins that cause allergies can be removed from from the from the crops. So, for example, like peanuts, um, with genetic injury, no one no one will ever be allergic to peanuts again. And genetically modified um, food can last a longer time on the shelf and therefore uh, taste better and long last longer. Stephen Yoshida, expert in immunology from UC Davis. Notice that 90% of the world food supply is consisted, consists of 15 plants and 8 animals. Therefore, he says, a single disease can devastate much of the crops. He states, he says genetic engineering of existing species is one way to increase productivity and genetic diversity of the existing food base on which the human population depends. He's saying that um, in cases a disease does occur, we should increase the genetic diversity available on the crops and 
um, this way, then if, if it does get wiped out, then it will only be a small portion. Genetically modified organisms can save a lot of problems and most importantly be beneficial to the human health. You've got a long introduction, and it takes you a while to get to your proposition, but you finally do a minute into the speech. Uh, since your speech only goes five minutes, that means that you've got four minutes that you're using to support that particular point. In that four minutes, you mentioned several examples, but I don't get any evidence on those examples. They're just referred to BT corn. Uh, that's where all sweet corn apparently comes from. The golden rice that you talk about. Uh, there's a whole claim that... Uh, Allergens could be removed from peanuts, for instance, and I don't have any experts, any uh, real-world examples, any facts that show that this is the case. There's no source citation on any of these kinds of things. Now, I'm not saying that they're not true, but I can't say that they are true based on what you've told me. I've just got your assertion for it, and so you need to get the evidence into the argument. Uh, there's no preview of what the main points are, but internally you have pretty good signposts for the structure, so it's not hard to follow. You have a very good way of talking to the audience. Uh, you're pretty direct and engaging uh, when you're discussing these things. I like the personal examples as a way of creating interest in the subject, but the personal examples by themselves are not going to be all that convincing. There's not really any statistical data. You had <coughs> a couple of pieces of expert testimony, but they're talking about very speculative kinds of issues. For instance, about the last one on the diversity of plants, I thought it was interesting that they say, you know, there's only 14 plants and eight kind of animals that we really have to, that we have available to us, and so we need to worry about being able to have diversity in those kinds of things. And then it says, maybe genetically modifying these things would be a way to address that issue. So it's kind of speculative. We don't have any examples that those essential foods were, in fact, something that we have saved or protected from disappearing or being threatened. Uh, maybe the corn and the rice are going to fit into that category, but I need some uh, illustration of that. It's, it's all really uh, kind of... Um, this is all theory at this point to, that you're describing instead of something that's practical. And I need, if you're trying to convince me, I need to see some of what you're talking about. All right, thank you.